Hey gang, how you doing? Welcome back. Chat again. We uh, recently picked up a couple of Glock 43s. And, uh, you know, they're an in-the-pant holster uh, or an in-the-pant type gun. Really nice carry conceal. Um, we needed some way to carry them. And we were looking around on, on a few websites and... and wasn't really she wasn't really keen on many of the holsters that we saw because most all of them are just kydex it's folded over kydex and they put a belt clip on it and that's what you wear in the pant um, she wasn't really liking it idea too much I have a holster that I picked up oh, probably a better part of four years ago now I picked up a Walter PPQ MS uh, PPQ M2 sorry and um, I bought myself what they were calling a hybrid holster meaning it was kydex and leather. Here it is right here. So what I ended up doing is I picked this holster up and you'll see it's it's leather. This is the suede outside. Here's a smoother part in the inside. And it's kydex and a simple belt clip. Well, what I ended up doing is, is I really liked this holster a lot and it worked well. So what I did is I found out that, uh, hey, I make knives. I have knife, I have kydex for knife sheaths and stuff. So why can't I do it? I even had some leather. So I thought to myself, well, what the heck? I'll do it. So what I ended up doing is, is I actually just meant basically, the first thing I did is when I got this one, um, it was a little bit too big. The leather was a little bit too large, and it occupied too much of my waist, and I didn't like that. So what I did is I ended up, it had screws. That was the other thing. So there was, there was five screws on this. So what I ended up doing is I took it apart, and I cleaned it up a little bit. I cleaned up the kydex. I cut down the leather. I trimmed it all off a little bit. And uh, then I went and I, I used the eyelets and I, I riveted this on. I attached it permanently. And then I took the heat gun and I heated it up slightly and put a little bit of a curve to it. And I'd put it on and made it 100% better. So, not to steal any thunder from anybody that was, may I forgot the company I got this from, but uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. So it worked out well. So the next step was, was me going ahead and uh, making one for my Glock 19. So that's what I did. I took this basic shape because the Walter PPQ M2 and the Glock 19 are practically the same size. So what I ended up doing is I ended up mimicking this just by grabbing a piece of olive drab uh, uh, kydex and some leather. And I shaped it, did everything, and I formed it, and I molded it. And uh, for the first one, it turned out great. I really liked it a lot. Well, recently my wife, uh, was she's getting ready to go to a pistol uh, class for a bunch of gals and everything and she was trying to get an idea on what to carry, what to use and she wanted to get more familiar with carrying concealed. And we were really limited to what she could use because most of the stuff I have is based on me and what I used to do in the past. Um, anybody that's been around firearms long enough you realize you get a, a large collection of different types of holsters. Having been in law enforcement that just exaggerates this situation because not only did I have various firearms with different departments, but then on duty, off duty, um, a hybrid concealed carry to a really deep conceal. I've had it all. I've had uh, shoulder holsters, cross draw, small of the back, ankle, leather, kydex, hybrid, you name it. I've had it all. Uh, even the cheapest of Uncle uh, Mike's, the little neoprene things and stuff like that. So what I ended up doing is I made one of these for my Glock 19. She liked it, and she likes it, and she's very comfortable wearing it in the pant. Now, a lot of the gals, you'll probably, if any of the gals ever see this video, you'll understand that carrying concealed at the hip isn't very good for the girls. It doesn't really work well. Appendix, though, works really well. So she really said that the, she, the holster I made for my Glock 19 was really comfortable, especially at appendix carry. So, fast forward to what we have now is we ended up picking up those Glock 43s. She wanted me to make a holster similar to what I did for the Glock 19, but for the 43. I just finished that. This is it right here. Now, the, the Glock still has plastic on it because the leather is still a little damp from... Um, I rub it down with a uh, the LP leather protectant that I have to seal it all up really good. But she picked out some Tiffany Blue that I recently used some for a neck knife that I made and uh, uh, ended up giving it to her. Um, I used the Tiffany Blue and then I picked up the belt clip as well as I did a really nice uh, nine ounce leather on the back. I cut it, shaped it, wet formed it, then I uh, trimmed everything down and this is what I have right now. And it's turned out really nice. So having made this, I made it off camera because it had been you know, a better part of two or three years since I'd made this one. 
I made this one off camera, just finish it up. It's got to dry now. I'm going to bring it up to the house and let her take a look at it. But really nice. And, and honestly, just like a buddy of mine said, he goes, I really like that, that color. And it's really slick how it works good with the gray. I can get full purchase in there. I can get in there and I can grab a hold of that and not hit my, my knuckles on there at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make one for my Glock 43. And I got another piece of 9 ounce leather here. It's about uh, nine, 9 9 to 10 ounce. It's pretty thick. It's not what I use for my sheets. It's a little thicker. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use some of that, that new uh, Kydex that I was telling you guys about. Or um, this is the Holstex brand. And it's, um, it's like Raptor. It looks like a leather skin. I wanted to show you this because I just want to do the, sh the, the sheath just to show people the differences. So hopefully the light's not going to glare too badly on this. So I got a piece of 5x7 Holstex. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the process. I'm going to make one. And just kind of, you know, show you guys how I did it, bring you along for the ride. I know a lot of you like to see something different other than knives from time to time. And you like to see that I'm not talking about grass or backpacks. So... Let's get started. Okay guys, I was doing a little, letting the uh, leather dry out a little bit and I was doing a little photo, a little photo studio action and then um, uh, talking to the missus. And uh, so this is the Obenhoffs. I've mentioned this in previous videos. This is my leather protectant. So um, I really like this stuff. It's really nice. Um, it smells kind of good too actually. But uh, what I want to do next is now that it's all shaped up, I got everything done. I sanded this down. Uh, I went 400 grit on the edges, so I sanded that down. Um, just gonna have to get a little acetone, maybe, and uh, clean up. I got a little white pencil mark. It's, I use wax pencils. I use black and white wax pencils. They seem to work really good for Kydex and marking leather and stuff like that. But um, doesn't erase as easy as regular pencil does. But for the darker material, it's harder to see it. At least for me, it is. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some Obenhoff's uh, leather protecting on this, and then um, which I need a rag for, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and rivet these together. Uh, the rivets I have are, are number eights, and I probably could have used a longer one. I think they're called number tens or something like that. They're a little bit longer than a normal eyelet rivet that I use for all my sheaths. But for this one, it worked good. It did uh, cross, it did bend over and bite into the leather really nice so that worked out good and also the missus came home she saw this she tried it on it worked awesome she was able to draw do everything at kept position it was very comfortable for her so I got the thumbs up on that one so what I'm going to do is hit this with the, the open hoffs and then I'm going to rivet this put the eyelets in get my six eyelets in there and uh, you know press it in form it and then it'll be done
yeah, it turned out really nice. Now, the reason for the plastic is because, as you've seen, I, I put that Obenhoffs on there. The, uh, the leather was getting pretty dry, and uh, I was just kind of rushing it pretty much probably just for video sake than anything else. I wanted to wrap this all up in one day. Uh, I've got a lot of stuff going on tomorrow and the weekend and stuff like that, so um, that's coming up. So I got a lot of... I got a lot of stuff going on in the next few days, and I just wanted to wrap this up around to cl put closure on this video. But I'll leave the plastic on there for a little bit, only because I was wet forming. As you've seen, I was shaping it back here, like I did uh, for this one. I wet formed that, and now you know it's dry. Everything's good to go. You're going to see marks in the leather, but that's just going to happen because of the fact that you're going to pull your firearm in and out, which is an issue. But also because of wet forming, I actually pressed the leather into the grooves. Uh, so yeah, so I think it I mean, really turned out nice. I did eight holes, or I did four here and three here. It turned out really nice there. I like that, where I opted to just do uh, six on this one. And uh, I don't really, I think it's more of an aesthetic than anything else. Um, you know, I really wish I did have uh, the longer eyelets. I would have felt more comfortable with that. But I, 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 I would press them in place really good, and I would pull at the leather, and nothing came loose. So that's that is what it is now granted with that said I could always put screws and and uh, head posts in these I could run a head post in the back and put a screw in there and that would work good uh, probably and, and with these eyelets still attached I could just do that uh, which maybe I'll do it maybe I won't but um, I do like the look of that so far it's it's pretty slick uh, here I'll just take that out real quick again so you guys can see uh, so yeah so that's um, I had to, and I had to rob Peter to pay Paul I had to take the uh, the belt clip off the other holster that the one that I had bought because I couldn't find the other one. I thought I bought more than these, but uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. There you have it. So uh, yeah, thanks for uh, stopping over. Thanks for watching the video. Um, got any comments or anything like that, or any tidbits? Maybe something that you uh, you like or don't like, or what you saw me do that you know I could do differently. If you have experience in it, great. Um, otherwise, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, CKKnifeandTool.com. Patreon.com backslash uh, forward slash CK Knife and Tool, uh, Facebook, Instagram, MeWe, Ver, uh, Vero. Uh, it's a new uh, uh, pro platform, kind of like Instagram. It's called V E R O and um, uh, Viral Herd, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, you guys, take it easy. Have a good one. Thank you very much for stopping over. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.